All right, if welcome back for the episode of This Week in Charts via Conover Trades and Wall Street from Main Street. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find Jason on Patreon. You can find me on ConoverTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into it this week here. So we did have a little bit of a sell-off on our hands, and uh, the levels I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks did trigger to the bear side. So... Again, last week I told you guys about this green bar low, needing a daily close below that. And I also said, if we close the week below this weekly green candle, it would be extra bearish. And um, we actually not only did that, but we closed below the August lows as well on a weekly closing basis here on the spiders. So definitely bear control is now in play on the weekly time frame, and it came on good volume too. So we had the volume there over 100 million shares Thursday and Friday, and the bears really drove it home. So for the first time really since earlier this year, like March, uh, we actually have bear weekly control. Every time we've had a sell-off um, since then, you know, it's always been, you know, we sell off in the morning and then we kind of by 11 o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon, they spike it back up and the bulls regain control. The bears now have followed through and you're also going to see there is a head and shoulder top in play here. Um, sometimes these patterns can fail. Um, see, I've seen this pattern a lot on the internet lately, last couple of days. Um, and, you know, when everybody's expecting it, sometimes it goes the opposite way. But um, regardless, closing the week below that August low does, um, you know, re regardless of what I can speculate here about, you know, too many people, too many eyes on it. The fact of the matter is bears... Uh, close below this this August low here on the spiders and they did it on volume so I have to give the bears the benefit of the doubt now and we have to uh, say the market you know there is bear control in the market here um, what was the catalyst well we had the FOMC and of course everybody knows by now <clears throat> essentially Powell reiterated higher for longer and the market here really did not like that so the market um, it seems to me if you remember back in in May April and May of this year um, the market was actually pricing in cuts by September that got pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. And the, the Fed, you know, the market was expecting the Fed to basically say that they're done. Um, that's kind of the, the, the judgment I have based off of this reaction. Um, and they actually essentially raised the dot plot by another 50 basis points. So the Fed doing the exact opposite and the Fed's been saying that they've been going to, that they've been going to do this all year long. And the market's been like, ha no, we don't believe you. We're just going to keep rallying. We're just going to keep buying NVIDIA. We're going to keep buying NASDAQ stocks. Um, and now I think finally it's sinking in here to the market. Um, we also had the BOJ on Friday. Um, there was some there was some talk that that added fuel to the fire. They didn't really say anything that different. I have a theory here, and um, it's possible that there's something else going on. So um, if you look at commercial real estate, um, we're starting to break down here. So a pretty good dump here in September. And I noted this earlier this week. I told my members about it. I think I'm seeing something else. I think the BOJ might be a red herring, but we cover VNQ in here every week. And um, this is a breakdown, um, certainly. And, you know, he had a nice little trend line here. Um, nothing to say it can't bounce, but you came down on volume and that's a pretty good breakdown. This is a real uh, real estate investment trust ETF, essentially. Um, and... Uh, that's definitely a sign of weakness. Another thing I saw also is JNK. Um, again, junk bond ETF. You know, if this starts to break down and you break these pivots here, um, there's a lot of problems. And again, so junk bonds breaking down, real estate investment trusts breaking down. We know commercial real estate is a problem. Maybe that's the next shoe to drop. Maybe the BOJ was a red herring. Maybe even the Fed was a bit of a red herring. Um, there could be something bigger going on underneath the surface here. KRE, again, regional banks starting to slip here. We talked about these bear flag patterns. This does have some support around 40, but again, these banks are telling us there's a problem. Junk bonds telling us there's a potentially a problem and REITs telling us a problem. I don't like the way that smells right now, um, but bottom line, Bears have control here. Um, I will look for a bounce early next week. I do think we'll, we are a little short-term oversold. There is some support here. Again, you have this trend line going back to March. That could be a short-term target. Um, I also have a mathematical area right around 427 on the spider. So in this vicinity, there's good support. If you look at the ES, um, again, there's that contract gap right there, right at the even number of 4,300. That has not been filled, obviously. Um, so that may be a magnet there for the market, something to watch. 
uh, going into early next week for a bounce. Again, markets are a little oversold. We have to give the bears the upside bias and the benefit of the doubt for now as they have proven that they have control now. Triple Qs here, um, again, going into that 100 moving average. We've been we've been talking about this for months, right? This purple trend line, we did attack it. Um, it actually finished up five cents on Friday. However, uh, we did lose the 100 moving average. We closed below this trend line on the weekly. It did still close above this pivot. In fact, didn't even really challenge it. But you did lo you did lose this inside bar pattern. So again, that bullish pattern is negated. Um, additionally, the big problem for me with the with the Nasdaq and the Qs is the semiconductors. You guys know I love the semiconductors as a leading indicator, and they should be leading in a bear market. They should be leading to the downside in a bull market. They should be leading to the upside. Um, they were green on Friday. However, again, we closed below the August lows. Um, close even below the June low as well and the 20 week moving average. There is now an air pocket here on the semiconductors down to 129. Um, doesn't mean it'll go down there on a straight line. You'll have some bounces along the way, but that is a big, big, big negative for technology. Seeing that with the semis and to cover the leading semi NVIDIA. Um, again, resting on that 100 moving average, but we did break this trend line here um, on a weekly closing basis. There's also another one right here. Um, that we close below as well a shorter term trend line there if we lose 400 you know that 403 area that pivot again there's nothing to say this doesn't go down there and fill that gap all the way down to 300 so semiconductors are sounding a little bit of an alarm bell and i always want to pay attention to them when i see that iwm you're going to see a head and shoulder here as well triggering measured move down to 165 that won't go down there in a straight line there is a lot of support here at this gap at 175 176 that could be a short term bounce level, but that is a triggered pattern and that is an impulsive sell on the Russell 2000 Dow here closing the week below the August lows um, that should have some support at 338. If you get, uh, if you get through that, it's down to 331.50. So Dow in trouble here as well. Um, we talked about the semis. How about cloud software up 58 cents on Friday? Again, I told you this would have support at 340 and it stalled out there again, 100 MA in that vicinity. But looking on the weekly again, we did lose that that potential breakout bar, and you could make a case there is a little bit of an M top, little double top pattern there, um, closing below this pivot here. That's the next big level uh, for the IGV, and you know that could get you down to that closer to that 300 handle. Uh, but right now, cloud trying to hold up. There's a lot of support in here, um, so again, it should bounce here in the near term, but definitely not a good sign to see that weakening, especially with those semis. Uh, transport's also on the weaker side. It, Told you guys I don't like this area. I don't like the pattern that it's putting uh, presenting. So this should get to 14,750 to 148. That's a bigger bounce level for the DJT. Um, but again, transports weak, and again, oil prices are not helping the transports here, um, and it's not a good indicator for the economy. But DJT, I like that down to about 14,748. Um, interest rates here. So again, that was really the story of the week, and you know what have I been saying here? For quite some time interest rates do not have any sort of a bear pattern here there's the two-year um, pushing through that five percent level again so closing the week above five uh, percent that's a new I believe a new weekly closing high yep so a new 16-year closing high on the two-year yield and this is you know the Fed's kind of walking a tightrope here so they decided to pause this week the two-year yields only you know, 10, 20 basis points away from the effective Fed funds rate. Uh, so um, them pausing, it was really, you know, I know the market expected it, but th this does not have far to go to, to get the Fed behind the curve again. Um, so, and we don't have a Fed meeting until November. So there's two months uh, where you better hope the two year stays below this white trend line here, uh, because that is that is the, the panic level, essentially. And the market does not want the two-year to get above that um, because that means the Fed is going to have to continue hiking. The Fed, the market does not, trust me. They do not want to see that. Um, but right now, Fed did pull back, uh, the two-year did pull back a little bit Thursday, Friday. But take a look at the long end. Five-year, um, back about 4.5. Ten-year, big breakout here. And pulled back a little bit on Friday into that 4.5 area. Thirty-year, monster breakout there. Um, that has room to run if we look at a monthly, um, you know, up into this kind of 4.75 area. So there's your pivot low. This is all the way back to 98. And then 
uh, 2010. There's a couple of pivots in there. So I'd say 4.75, maybe a pierce of that on the 30 year. Um, but again, the rates higher for longer. That's what the Fed's been saying. The market is finally, I think, starting to get it into its head. But again, like I've been saying, this is not a bear pattern. That's a picture perfect covenant handle for rates. That's going to cause a lot of problems for assets and risk assets. Again, hence why I talked about real estate investment trusts and possibly commercial real estate. Anyways, uh, XHB here, another sector that will be affected by rates that the market has just ignored. Oh, who cares? The rates are going to come down. Rates are going to come down. Buy housing, buy housing. And XHB finally coming in. That's a triggered head and shoulders. This will have supported this trend line here. If we break that, um, you know, I like XHB down to about 70 to 72 here. Um, but again, housing also coming in. Look for a bounce at that trend line, maybe a pierce of it, 75, somewhere in that area. We already talked about VNQ, but if this doesn't hold, um, if you look on the monthly here, you got a monthly bear flag that's been playing out for the last year. So this has room to run, you know, down to that 200 MA on the monthly. Not a good sign. Bulls need to turn it around there on the VNQ shortly. Um, XLF here, another breakdown. Again, so lower highs there. You got to hold this trend line. If we get a large bank ETF, that is starting to break down. KBE and KRE also on the weaker side as well. So these things are they're starting to tell us that there's problems here. Um, and again, those rate hike lag effects maybe starting to come into play as well as interest rates continue to rise. So kind of a double whammy there. For the market, XBD also rolling over. Um, we'll say four, 475 to 480 for this um, is an area that I will be watching. Anyways, uh, over to crude. So it's into commodity land here. This continues to hold up. So it did go into, you know, to get pretty extended here. Pulled back. We had a contract rollover earlier this week. Um, pulled back and then um, got a little bit of a bounce. I'm not sure if this is stalling out here. I would say if you're getting between 93 and 95, it's going to get really long in the tooth in the, in the short to medium term. I'm also hearing a lot of, uh, you know, a month or two ago, everybody was calling for a crash, demand destruction. And now I'm starting to hear, oh, $100 a barrel, $120 a barrel. Um, so I think we're kind of closer to a correction than we are to another you know, move higher. It doesn't mean we can't get up into this area, but I would not be a buyer here. I would wait for a pullback. Um, but crude, you know, it's holding up really well. And, um, you know, I know Biden put, um, he basically said he would train the SBR to zero. Um, yeah, I don't know how much, uh, I'll just say no comment to that right now. But um, in any case, um, I still think 93 to 95 is good resistance. And right now it's holding up. I don't have a sell signal right now, um, but it is closer to resistance than it is to, su to support right now. So just leave it at that. Uh, XLE here, um, finally coming back in a little bit. This probably wants to test 88, maybe 87. Um, but again, just a weekly pullback there doing weekly consolidation. XOP finally coming back in here. This was this was overbought um, on the weekly time frame as well. We'll look that we'll look for that around 135 um, in the in the near term. But again, nice pullback there. These things needed to pull back, right? They've been on breakout for a long time, and nothing goes up in a straight line forever. There's OIH as well, and again, it just kissed that 200 or excuse me 100 month moving average, and now pulling back in. So that makes a lot of sense there. Uranium continuing to to hold up. Look at CCJ up another three percent. Um, that's hanging in there just fine. I still think that's really overbought. I would not be a buyer. I would not commit new capital. If you're a hodler, I don't have a problem with it. Um, just know that, you know, it's had a big run and it's it's going to be due for a correction at some point. Um, you are at M making a new high on Friday, not a new closing high. Actually, no, it was a new closing high. Check that. Um, still very overbought here. I mean, look at where it was, 34 to 46. I know it's catching up to spot price, but just know, um, you know, I'm starting to see a lot of FOMO out there. I wouldn't commit new capital right now. Um, doesn't mean you need to be a seller, but you know, unless you're swing trading it, you know, trail your stop. But if you're an investor, you should be fine. Um, Nat gas here, kind of a flat, actually was exactly flat on the week. Um, nothing's changed. Weekly pattern is still intact. And um, that is a long bull base there, but that has been in a range now and that is tightening. So it is compressing for a move here. Um, anyways, let's look at a dollar index here. So DXY is still acting well, as you might imagine. Um, closing the week at 105.58, little 
pop, pull back, and another pop. This should still get to 106, 10650. I don't really see any reason why it can't. Um, and we'll see how that works out over the next couple of weeks. There's there's nothing wrong with this chart. It's a little overbought, but I mean, you're just grinding up on that 20 moving average and there's no real problems when I see that. So still looking for 106, 10650 on the DXY. Uh, gold here, um, still holding up, still inside of this wedge pattern. And it's holding up even despite the strong dollar, which is a good sign. Again, up uh, a break through this. Um, continue to 2000 breakdown is 1900 it's very easy if you get through 1900 it's down to 1825 if you get through 2000 you go test 2050 again so very simple there on the gold chart and nothing has changed but that range is tightening as well um, silver also acted decently well this week trying to put in those higher lows here backed off of the 24 handle i don't really have a good level here in the near term i'll just say 2450 on the upside if it gets through these moving averages um, on the downside, you don't want to lose this pivot. If we do that, um, it's down to 21. I'm kind of rooting for it to happen because I want to buy some. Um, but right now, it's just kind of stuck in the middle here. Um, but those are the levels I've got right now. In the short term, platinum also getting a little bit of a bounce. I still think that needs to go down to 850 to 860. Palladium not doing a whole lot. And uh, copper testing this little trend line. We talked about this wedge last week. And, um, you know, we did knife through it on Thursday with volume, got a bounce. I do think it wants to break and uh, head down to 340 there. Um, lastly, before we get to Bitcoin, really quick, one sector I've been getting a lot of questions about here. Um, it's the marijuana stocks. Recently, they had a nice run. There was some talk about essentially um, removing it. I can't remember if it's like Schedule 1 or Schedule 3, but essentially um, it's kind of like the first step to, to like decriminalize a wide federal decriminalization. Um, and that happened a few weeks ago. Obviously got a big pop here. This is CGC Canopy. You can see Tilray here also having a big bid, ACB, MSOS. All these stocks having a big move. Um, that's not it. WG, I believe it is. Yeah, Grow Generation. Uh, coming back in, but um, these could be buyout targets. Um, right now, I think this pop is kind of run its course here but there may be a bit of a macro low in place so if we look at the chart of mj which has the most price history um you're gonna see we had heavy volume and i'm looking at a monthly chart here actually let's let's go to a weekly um you have heavy volume here and again there is heavy volume here but it's 20 dollar equity versus a three dollar equity so this volume is actually probably two three times the size of this so heavy volume, and if we get MSOS, same thing. Look at the volume there um, from $6 a share to, you know, the last time we had a volume surge, it was 10. And look at the volume rate. So dollar amount volume is very high. That may be a macro low. The one thing I'll caution with these, um, you look at CGC, they just did another share offering. Um, interest rates, right? Look at the 10 year. So in 2020, you know where it is now versus 2020 okay look at cgc where it was in 2020 and look at where it is now it's very expensive for these companies to raise debt uh, so they have to do dilutions this is also a very heavily shorted sector keep that in mind as well this just went you know from 35 cents to almost two dollars and then from two to 84. so these are not out of the woods they could be buyout targets i know the tobacco companies are looking at them uh, possibly some pharma companies um obviously uh Constellation owns, I think, 40% of CGC already. So there is some legitimacy to it. I do think it, and also going into an election year, they also may be runners as well as we get closer to the election. Uh, but just be aware of that. Lots of capital, these balance sheets are not very good. Um, so they're gonna have to be attractive enough for them to be buyouts. Um, but they could be a sector of interest and they will be a sector of interest to me as we get closer and closer to the general election. But uh, I just wanted to cover that really quick. It's been getting a lot of questions about the marijuana stocks. Anyways, lastly, let's get over to Bitcoin here. Um, so Bitcoin kind of having an up and down week. If I can get my mouse, there we go. Um, Bitcoin having an up and down week. We did have a nice bit. I, I told you last week that, you know, it did a nice thing with that fake breakdown. And then it rallied up to the 50 MA. I said, I think 27.5 to 28, I would give the upside bias to. And you know, that's where it went. So 27.5, 12 was the high and rolled over at the 50 MA. Um, the daily chart, not terrible. Um, it's trying to firm up a little bit here. 
despite the 50 MA rejection. The problem I have with Bitcoin is the weekly. So again, losing that green bar low on the weekly, and now you have a bearish inside bar here. Um, I st Here's the one thing, I still don't trust any pattern in this because the crypto market is very illiquid. And if it's not liquid, it's very hard to, to read, right? You've seen a lot of fake breakdowns and fake breakouts in Bitcoin recently. So it's hard to really gauge here, but face value, you have a bearish inside bar on the weekly. If this, if these lows break again, it's going to 21.5. It probably does that very quickly. Um, if it happens, it's probably going to be one of those, you know, 30 minute sell offs or we're down 5,000 points in 30 minutes. Um, kind of like the last one, but Bitcoin tends to do this. Um, and that's the level I'd be interested in it, interested in it at, but anyways, guys, to wrap up here again, Big picture, bears have control. Close the week below that green, uh, that red bar low and this green bar. Um, could we go down as low as 420? I think we can go even lower potentially, but in the near term, I still think there's a lot of support between 420, 425, and we should get some type of a bounce, um, maybe early next week, or maybe in the middle of the week, um, just off of technicals, but big picture, bears have control here and they have proven it on a weekly close and they've done it on volume, which is also very important. Anyways, guys, gonna wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on ConoverTrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all next week.